Coming to you from the Grassy Valley Stage Pulpit in Knoxville, Tennessee. We are an outreach ministry of Grassy Valley Baptist Church, and we're located on the corner of Lovell Road and Kingston Pike. Hello, everyone. I'm Alan Kirk. And I'm Richard Britton, and we welcome you to another episode of The Word at GV. And today's word, Richard, is we're going to talk briefly, I hope, about ministry. Ministry. Well, I'm Which curious is, about this today. That's a good word. So <laughs> we're going to go to the definition, as we always start off with. And this is the Oxford Dictionary definition. I hope I've got the same one you do. I'm not sure, okay. but um, okay. it's usually a singular word. When I look up the Oxford Dictionary definition of it, it says the spiritual work hmm. or service of a Christian or a group of Christians, the period of time spent serving the church. Now, <laughs> the first thing that comes to my mind when we talk about serving the church is we think of the building, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's typically what you think of as a building, church right? building. That's yeah. where my mind wanders yeah. to when I hear the church. Well, the church is the body of Christ, right? So it's the people in the buildings. Hello. Okay. <laughs> dang a ling a ling a ling. Okay. So uh. that's where we're going to focus because that's where Jesus focused. Yeah. Is on serving the body of Christ, which is mm. his church. Okay. So that's where I want to focus in on. And then when we talk about ministry, Ministry is one of those things that usually will cost you something to serve others. So when mm. we think of ministry and costing you something, we think in terms, or we should think in terms, of time, right? Oh, yes. We have to sacrifice our time. Yeah. We have to sacrifice by studying, like you yeah. and I do, right? We yes. study in order to teach. Yeah. It's a sacrifice. It takes time away from other things. You know, we'd much rather sit and watch TV <laughs> and watch sports or something. But we sacrifice those things in order to serve mm. a ministry. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, there's preparation. Mm. Um, there's sacrifice with other relationships. You know, I sacrifice time with Debbie uh, or you sacrifice time with you know, not being around family or, yeah. you know, not doing that sort of thing. Or you sacrifice your time driving from, from one place to the next when you could be doing something else. Yeah. Uh, but the reward huh. of doing ministry is the opposite of that sacrifice, is that it's a blessing. And we're growing closer to others. You know, oh. you're sacrificing your time by being here today and doing the Word, you know. Um, <laughs> and... It grows us closer to God because we're being blessed and because we're, you know, sacrificing. So you had a, a really good example off camera before we get into uh, the, the Bible, uh, three Bible verses that we're going to cover today. And you were talking about over at Angelic Ministry. Yes. So tell me about that real quick. <laughs> well, I, I work with a, a, a group of young men at the Angelic Ministries here in Knoxville. And every now and then a new a new man comes in and uh, and it's a huge building with lots of bathrooms and lots of uh, places that need to be cleaned up and uh, maintained and so when a new person comes in they uh, they are assigned to clean the restrooms. So uh, one of the young one of the young men who had been there for a while was training the newbie, and as he trained him he was saying this this will be your job here to clean this restroom. And he said, well, how should I go about this? And he says, well, in simple terms, just clean it as if the Lord Jesus Christ were coming to use this facility. So clean it as if you're doing it for him. Right. And I thought about that as he shared that. I thought, wow, all ministry should be done unto the Lord and do it as if he's going to yeah. come and inspect our work and, and uh, evaluate it firsthand because really... He is evaluating our work yes. firsthand. And it's just like the people here at Grassy Valley in the church mm -hmm. that 
do work here at the church, yeah. like our janitor, maintenance people, yeah. uh, teachers, uh, pastors. You know, it, it's we're of course we're upkeeping the building, mm -hmm. uh, and and we have you know a, a woman that that takes care of the cleaning of the church, and she does it like she does it under the Lord. She yes. thinks, she knows that this is. God's house mm -hmm. where we gather weekly and on, mm -hmm. you know, Wednesday nights and, you know, everything's clean and mm -hmm. neat and, you know, it's mm -hmm. God's house. He, yes. he, he built this house to gather people together for worship. Mm -hmm. Well, let me, let me um, <laughs> equate this. I'm going to take your scripture out of order. Okay. okay? Yeah. And I'm going to go to number three. Okay. Directly which is oh. Matthew 20, 20 through 27 through 28. Matthew mm -hmm. 20, 27 through 28. All right. And relating that cleaning the toilets. Okay. That you just said about this, you know, young man that's being trained up, mm -hmm. who, you know, whoever it was that told him that. <laughs> okay. He's got him on the right track because let's read the scripture. And whoever wishes to be first among you shall be... Uh, your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Yes. And you know, when I think about being served, the one thing, the one scripture that comes to my mind about the Son of Man coming to serve is the best example is not cleaning toilets, mm. But when Jesus was washing the feet of his disciples oh, at the goodness. Last Supper, yes, that was the lowliest job. Now, can you imagine God of the universe, <laughs> but God of the universe coming to wash his disciples' feet? The nastiest job that you can think of, but he did it mm -hmm. he sure to did. show the example of how we are to serve others. So when you talk about that young man cleaning the toilets as if Jesus were coming, yes. that's what comes to my mind, the reversal right. of that. Jesus yeah. was humbling himself to the point of uh, doing the work of a, of a servant. And he's God. Yeah. But uh, I, his, his, his servants should be humble as he was or as he is, and, uh, and be willing to do the most menial tasks right. or to take care of the nursery and change those diapers. or Do it as unto or, the Lord. Do it as unto the Lord. And uh, yep. he sees people that are willing to take on the tasks that are probably not real popular, right. probably not something everybody's going to sign up for. But uh, right. the, the things that, that um, well, if it's important enough to be done, and you do it as unto the Lord. My mom used to prepare a plate of food mm -hmm. and she'd put aluminum foil over it and she'd hand it to me and she said, I want you to deliver this to Mrs. Alexander. And little Mrs. Alexander lives a couple miles away and she was 90 something years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was the delivery boy. Right. I carried that meal over to Mrs. Alexander and while I'm over there, I'd change a light bulb for her or fix something in her, in her house and it, it didn't dawn on me what you were doing. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know uh, uh, that. But but uh, the the Lord was allowing me. This was before I was even a believer. Right. You know, in Christ, I was just doing something that my mom told me to do. Sure. And I I was thankful. She was teaching me to care about others and to help others and to uh, look after their needs. Right. Ministry is mm -hmm. serving it. Re it and, and, you know, I, I know it's obvious. You think it's obvious to some people. Um, hmm. But just hmm. to give affirmation to people who mm -hmm. are serving right now, hmm. that it is. It's 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 serving. You're serving the Lord when you do these things, just as he served us. Yes. Whether it was dying on the cross or washing the disciples' feet, he gave us the example of how we're to serve others. Yes. You know, yeah. and, and that's really what it is in a nutshell. <coughs> so you've, you've got a couple other verses here that really show yeah. what service is. Okay. And, you know, we should do this as a reminder to folks 
about what service really is. And, mm -hmm. and you, you know, we'll go back to Ephesians 4. Back to Ephesians, okay. Yeah, Ephesians 4, 11 through 12. Yeah. And, you know, this is where Jesus, um, or where the, gos the Gospels, um, <laughs> it's, where, it's where Paul is telling us how um, God has sorted us out. You know, you alluded to this earlier when you said that some people are inclined to do things, yes. you know, better than others, or you might not see that, you know, that person may not see themselves in that position, but somebody else might. Right. Well, this scripture tells us in Ephesians 4, 11 through 12, it says, mm -hmm. and he gave some as apostles yes. and some as prophets yeah. and some as evangelists and some, in other words, spreading the gospel. Yes. I, I, that evangelism word, I, I want to be very careful with that. <laughs> and some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of service Yes. to the building up of the body of Christ. Yeah. So what, you know, really when it, what is that telling us? I mean, we're building up people, the building up of the saints or equipping of the saints, right? Yes. Who are the saints? Well, it'd be the ones that have received Christ Jesus, the, uh, the body of believers, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, for the work of of service to the building up the body of Christ. So we're to go out, you know, we come to in to mm -hmm. equip ourselves mm -hmm. through the apostles, through the teachers, through the pos uh, uh, apostles, through the pastors, through the teachers, through the equipping of the saints, mm -hmm. right? Yes. To go out and build up the body of Christ. Yes. So. We are charged with building up the body of saints. Yes. The equip them to go back out. And, you know, that, that's our service is to the Lord. To the Lord himself. Is to build up the saints so that they can be equipped to go out and build up the body of Christ. We're, you know, it's the, it's the command. It's Matthew 28 to go out yeah. and spread the gospel right. and disciple people and, you know, and bring them in, equip them to send them back out well, to build right. up the body, to bring them in, to build up. It's a cycle. Send them out and they bring new ones in. Right, you right. Can, it's not for our edification. No. It's for God's glory no. that we spread the gospel <laughs> and let people know the good news. Absolutely. You know, not turn them into a social club that we're just inward focused. Yeah. You know, that, that's, that's ministry. That's ministry. And I've learned over the years that serving as, uh, in, in some capacity, in some ministry, the one that benefits the most is me. I get yeah. to learn and study and, yes. and I get, there's so many benefits in just serving. I didn't realize that, you know, uh, you think of your, you're going to serve someone else, mm -hmm. but you're the real beneficiary there that, uh, right. you know, I remember I used to attend Sunday school and I went for several years and then they, they says, well, we'd like for you to teach once a month. Mm -hmm. And they, they plugged me into the rotation. And well, of course I was terrified every Sunday, you know, <laughs> that I had to teach, know but, that feeling. <laughs> <coughs> but, but eventually I became a little more comfortable and, and I was studying a whole lot more. Right. I studied a lot more when I was, you know, and then I began to realize there's, oh, there's, I got so interested in the Bible. There was so much to learn. Right. And then it, uh, it just got, now, then other opportunities to teach came along. Right. And it just. Um, but, but here's the deal, Richard, <coughs> just real briefly, and, mm -hmm. and I can give you examples of this, but, you know, for uh, folks sometimes think that we're going out you know, to, to bring people back to Grassy Valley or bring oh. ba people back to my church. Mm. I, I don't, that's not my objective. No. Our objective, no. if we're in ministry, mm -hmm. is we're in ministry all the time. Always, yes. Inside the church or outside the church. And when, we, when we're part of that cycle, when we're being equipped, I don't care if people come back to this church or not. I mean... You know, it'd be great. I think we've got great teachers. We've got a good pastor. But that's not the point of it. God's purpose is to bring people to saving knowledge of God's grace. Yes. 
And if they go to this church or the church down the road or where, the whole point is, is to be <laughs> equipped to go back out and tell others well, and to edify the body of Christ, not necessarily yeah. in this congregation, but wherever they land. Quick story, and, and we'll move on to the last point that we want to make, but quick story. I was in a, a Sunday school class in the last church I was in. Mm -hmm. We probably had 25 people in there, and we had awesome teachers. I mean, mm. we, we really had really mm. good teachers, <laughs> and better than me, I feel like, anyway. Mm. And, you know, the funny thing about that class, and, you know, people can talk about it like, oh, well, it broke up, and, you know, that class must not have been good because they all disbanded. Well, let me tell you something. Out of that class, mm. not only did we have Sunday school teachers that, popped up out of that class yes. but we had people out of that class that went to other churches and planted themselves in as missionaries and as you know um, uh, leaders in uh, um, uh, spreading the gospel yes. um, you know I know of people that are in other churches now that are in leadership Yes. So God raised up leaders out of that Sunday school class. And that's the perfect example <laughs> of what we're talking about in that scripture right there. That's ministry, isn't it? Yes. That's ministry. Yeah. That God got a hold of them and took them into furthering the ministry of the gospel. Yes, it's like once they've been trained up, then they're commissioned, you know, to go out. That's what we're supposed to do. And it mm -hmm. may be for ministry in the church. Yes. that you're in, that's fine too. There's not a thing wrong with that. But the point is, is that we're supposed to l allow God to use us in the ministry Yes, and to serve others. You know, he's, it's uh, prophets, some mm -hmm. are evangelists, some are pastors, some are teachers, but it's always for the equipping of the saints for the work of the service yes. to building to the building up of the body of Christ. And if we're not yes. building up the body of Christ, we're dying. Well, I'm just telling you. Yes. The, uh, the ministry, it's, it's such a comprehensive um, uh, commission that he's given us. In, in Matthew 28, right. I'm going to put this extra scripture in there. Just It's 18 through 20. Jesus came and spoke to these men who were now apostles. They're, yeah. they're the, they're the uh, disciples and now he's commissioning them. He's about to ascend. And in uh, 50 days there, the Holy Spirit's going to descend. And they're going to become the apostles, the leaders of the church. Right. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Right. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all yeah. the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Right. See, that's, that doesn't just stop with our generation. No, or it doesn't just stop with our... That's, that's why a it's a cycle. Yeah. It's a cycle. Right. Discipleship is an ongoing process. Yes. It never stays stagnant. Um, and, and the churches of today... I think of, uh, there, uh, not all of them, but I'm saying some mm. churches have lost sight of that, of what our commission is, that mm -hmm. very commission, that yes. the Lord doesn't want us to just come into church for a social club. There's a purpose and a reason for the church, and it's to go back out and spread the good news. Yes. He can't, you know... We're absolved as sinners. You know, once we're saved and we yeah. know Jesus Christ, we know that whole process, our sanctification. But the one, that's one thing that's personal with God. Mm -hmm. But the corporate aspect mm -hmm. of this is, is that we have to go back out to spread yes. the good news of who Jesus is, who God is, yeah. the work of the Holy Spirit. Because without that... You know, mm -hmm. and we just finished an episode on legacy and inheritance. Mm -hmm. You know, if we don't do that, the church will die. It will die up. Well, that's right. It's, it's not meant uh, to come here for the next 50 years 
Uh, it's it's in, I met a man in Ohio once who uh, was a member of a small church. The church never got to be more than 50 or 60 people. And the reason it didn't grow was because, I mean, in numbers, right. people would come in, they would get equipped, and then they would go out. Yeah. And then new people would come in, they'd equip them, and they'd go out. And uh, there was a constant uh, sending of and people. And that's perfectly okay. That's yeah. exactly what that Great Commission is. Yeah. You know, and, 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 you know, as far as the money aspect of it, if there's any pastors or ministers watching this, mm -hmm. then have faith that oh. God will supply the, your, your local, your, your yeah. building's needs. He yeah. will if you're doing what he's called you to do. Yes. He says your job is to equip the saints for the work of ministry, you got to release them and let them go do the work. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and don't live in fear that, oh, well, we won't have yeah. enough ties in to pay the electric bill. Quit worrying about that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I have. That and I mean, I can give you testimony on that. I'd one. like, yes. But, yeah. you, you know, don't have no fear that, oh, well, you know, we've got to keep a percentage here and, you know, because they upkeep the church. God will supply your needs. Oh, yes. And wait, and you know what? That will not only see. look at this church, maybe 50 people, right? Yeah. 55 people. Yeah. How are we doing all the things that we're doing? <laughs> now, come on. Yeah. You, you're going to tell me that's due to 50 people. No, that's God moving in people's that's, hearts. That's God moving in this congregation. Yeah. You don't have to have 1,500, 1,600 people. I mean, no. What do, we just sent three motorcycles. To China. To China yeah. so that they could spread the gospel in their villages. There are and, Chinese pastors that have transportation. They yeah. can reach many villages. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was not possible uh, that's, recently. That's mm -hmm. ministry. And yeah. bought Bibles on Bibles top of also, that. yeah. Out of 50 people. Yeah. Now, come on. You're telling me that isn't God working in the hearts of people? And That's clearly. So anyway, so let me leave us on one word. Okay. <laughs> and wind up this episode. Okay. But I mean, I know we could talk about this all oh, day we could. long. Yes. Yeah. But um, let's let's give an encouragement before we leave out. First Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. All righty. This is the one you gave me. Okay. <laughs> you gave us. You gave me three. So okay. let's end up on the third one. This is a little bit different in the order that I had intended. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. We we just follow whatever the Spirit leads us to yeah. follow by. Uh, very good verse. Very encouraging. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a verse verses that not only encourage but um, uh, not a command but um, give us something to go by. Mm -hmm. um, let me just read it. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Here's the encouragement. Mm -hmm. Knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. Mm. Oh, my. That's such a blessing right there. You know? No. It uh, gets monotonous sometimes, and it's trying. Yes, They're frustrating. <laughs> you may be frustrated, and your patience tried, but it's um, at the end of the day, I can thank the Lord for the privilege. I can really look yes. back and thank Him. Yep. And there have been, I don't know, I've wanted to quit a couple hundred times, <laughs> but uh, that's just me in the flesh. Yeah. And I don't really want to quit the work of the ministry. Yeah. I never do. I want to stay well, with it. Well, if we uh, yoke with the Lord, right? Yeah. If we yoke our burdens with him, his burdens are light. Yes, yes. And we need to remember that scripture that tells us if we'll yoke with the Lord, his burdens are light. And it'll, it'll take the burden off of us. Mm -hmm. And... You know, yeah. he, 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 his rewards are greater than anything that we're going through on this earth. If, if you're engaged in this work, you're really wholeheartedly committed to it. Yeah. It's because you know who he is yeah. and how far did he go yeah. to redeem us? I mean, my goodness, how far did Jesus go to redeem us? What did yeah. he go through? There's really nothing too much he could ever ask of us. And it's, it's, a, it's a joy to just give him your... Well, and I always think of Paul. 
And the trip, Paul, yeah. Yeah, and tribulations he went through. And I know that um, even though as much as Paul went through, he stayed steadfast. steadfast. That's why he yeah. could say to the Corinthians, mm -hmm. stay steadfast. steadfast. Your, to your toil is not in vain. No, um, we do know Jesus rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. And we know others can enjoy eternal life as a result of receiving him. So um, we should give it everything we have. Well, as men, we, we toil in hardship of our work yeah. and our labor. Yeah. But when it's the work of the ministry, yeah. it's an eternal benefit that yeah. we don't, you know. And for women, uh, women <laughs> toil in the in labor yeah um in childbirth but look at the reward of a new birth and a child yes and, when that know. child comes along yeah i have a, a short example it's the noah's ark story back in genesis yeah noah invested heavily in building that ark he labored and built for years and years but at the end of the time he, everything he owned was invested in that ark. Yes. Everything. Yeah. And then the floods came. Right. And the only thing that survived the floods was Noah's ark yeah. and the inhabitants there. So this is a time to invest everything we have in the work of the ministry. Yes. In Christ and yes. uh, making him known because anything else is going to be lost. Yep. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Well, we want to thank you for joining us today. And uh, we hope that this word will be embedded into your heart uh, very deeply. And I'm thankful to have you joining us today. And uh, stay in the word and remain steadfast as you minister to others. And may God richly, richly bless you.